Imagine a dry desert with endless sand dunes transforming into a lush, green tropical paradise right before your eyes. This is what could happen if we were to terraform the Sahara Desert. Such a project could drastically change the world and potentially offer a solution to global warming. However, it could also have severe consequences, possibly leading to the destruction of oceans and making the planet even hotter. Terraforming the Sahara could bring great benefits but also catastrophic risks. In this episode, we'll explore the biggest challenges this mega project would face and whether it would save or destroy the world. So, what would a terraformed Sahara desert look like? There are two different scenarios, but one thing is certain. Whatever happens, it would be vastly different from what we see today. One possibility is replacing the vast desert with rows and rows of trees. The Sahara covers an enormous area of 9.8 trillion square meters, about the size of the United States, so planting trees on every 10 square meters would require 980 billion trees. For comparison, the Amazon rainforest has far fewer trees, and the Sahara, if transformed, would have more than twice as many. But don't imagine pine forests or giant redwoods. These would be hardy trees that require minimal water to survive, about 500 millimeters per year. However, planting a full forest of 980 billion trees is unrealistic. For example, TreeAid, an organization that plants trees in Africa, currently plants one tree every 19 seconds. Even if they could speed that up to one tree every second, it would still take forever to complete the task. Before we finish planting all those trees, we might even be living on Mars. Furthermore, a giant forest would do little to improve the lives of the 2.5 million people living in the Sahara, many of whom are nomads. It could also disrupt the ecosystems of desert species. The second option could be more practical. Instead of a vast forest, we could have a mix of forests, farms, and grasslands. This would allow the communities in the Sahara to participate in its transformation, creating new economic opportunities and adapting to the changing environment. This approach would focus on planting native species better suited to the climate, increasing genetic diversity and giving the desert a better chance to thrive. But transforming the Sahara wouldn't just be about greenery. It would also require a massive amount of infrastructure to supply water. For the first scenario of planting trees, scientists estimate it would need 4.9 trillion cubic meters of water annually, more than the entire world uses in a year. There are aquifers under the Sahara, but they would dry up within 30 years if we relied solely on them. Using ocean water is another option, but it comes with its own challenges like desalination and transporting water to the desert. Desalination plants would need to be built near the coast, and massive pipes would have to carry the water deep into the desert. These plants would also require a huge amount of energy, possibly harvested by solar panels spread across the desert. However, this solution would come with an astronomical price tag, potentially costing trillions of dollars and requiring global cooperation including wealthy nations and billionaires willing to fund the project. If this project went forward, it would create millions of jobs, especially in infrastructure and land management. The Great Green Wall initiative, which aims to build a wall of trees across the southern Sahara, has already created millions of jobs. Terraforming the entire desert would likely create even more. But despite the ambitious scale, progress might be slow. For example, the Great Green Wall has restored only 44 million hectares of its targeted 250 million since 2007, mostly due to a lack of funding. Even if money were no obstacle, it would take decades for forests, farmland, and grasslands to grow. While nature alone might take 600 to 1,000 years to create a forest, with human intervention, this could happen in about 100 years, or even faster with more resources. But even after 50 years, the Sahara could turn green, though it might bring unexpected side effects. One major issue could be the impact on global temperatures. While trees help cool the planet by removing carbon dioxide, forests also absorb more sunlight than sand, potentially heating the earth further. 
On the other hand, increased cloud cover over forests could reflect sunlight and help cool things down. Scientists aren't sure which effect would dominate. Another concern is the loss of sandstorms, which are crucial for transporting nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, and iron to the Atlantic Ocean. These nutrients are vital for marine life, and without them, ocean ecosystems could collapse. Additionally, these nutrient-rich sands are also carried to the Amazon rainforest, where they help sustain its ecosystem. If the Sahara's sand stops blowing toward the Amazon, the rainforest could lose an essential part of its nutrient supply, causing severe damage to one of the most important carbon sinks on Earth. In conclusion, terraforming the Sahara could have massive benefits, including potentially absorbing more carbon dioxide and providing new opportunities for people living there. But it could also have devastating consequences, disrupting ecosystems and possibly making global warming worse. While such a project is fascinating to imagine, it's also a reminder that terraforming anything, whether a desert or a planet, is a complex, risky endeavor. If we're looking for a new world to transform,